Hello, hello, I'm Li Hao. So previously we talked about module bundlers and I tried to explain it at three different levels. I tried to explain it at the level of junior engineer, senior engineer and expert engineer. So if you haven't watched that video, I think you should. So links will be at the one of the corner and in the description. So after that, we started to uh, talk about examples of module bundlers. So the last video we talked about is actually about Webpack. So if you're interested about Webpack and you haven't watched that video, links in the description and in the corner again, please go and watch them. So we've done with Webpack and today we're going to talk about Rollup. So let's try to search for Rollup this time. Rollup. Well, um, it's not this Rollup shop. It's Rollup Jazz. Let's see if we can find something interesting like how we find about Webpack. We don't have a Wikipedia page for Rollup. Then maybe we can find something from the very first commit of Rollup, right? Let's try and look up for that. So I'm going to come over here and roll up, roll up. Okay, so how do we quickly find the first commit? Um, if you look for the commit history, it's, it's going to be a very long list because there's, it's over 4,000 over commits. So I have this small little trick that I'm going to share. Maybe you already know, right? It's nothing secret. In almost every JavaScript project right now, there's always one file that will be created a guarantee will be created at the very beginning of the project, uh, which is the package JSON file. Right? This file is the one that specify what is your dependency, what is the um, main entrance of the of your projects, and yeah, you you would have to have this file if you want to install something, right? So let's take a look at this file and let's try to git blame it, right? Find out which commit creates this file, right? And things can change throughout, like all the dependency, maybe a lot of people change something, but you know, the t name or the top, the open bracket is something that you're never going to change, right? So apparently this is the initial commit, right? Seven years ago. Ah, oh, man, let's take a look at this. So Rollup was created in 2015, uh, an initial commit by Rich Harris, which is also the creator of Svelte. So let's take a look at the readme and see anything interesting that we can find. Oh, hey, this is interesting. Uh, it's a Wiz Khalifa song that's inspired this name of this package. I roll up. So this is an experimental project and you definitely should not try and use it yet. So Rollup is the next generation ES6 module bundler, right? By the year of this 2015, this is the year that ES6 modules is being introduced. Webpack, what we saw over the last video, was created in 2014, which is a year before this, right? So this year is where ES6 modules is out and there are tools that tries to take full advantage of ES6, right? So the link of this commit I will link it in the description. If you're interested, you can go dig it out and take a read, right? So I have read this through, right? So let me give you like a summary of this. So the point of writing this document, the module bundlers that are in this space are uh, Esperanto. According to this document is the best option. Um, I wasn't around. 2015, I'm still a university student, so I wouldn't know about any module bundler. JSPM, which is like a module bundler plus package manager in one, two in one kind of uh, approach. And Browserify and Webpack is like transpiling your modules into common JS along the way. Uh, what does that mean? What, what is common JS and what, what does that um, uh, different from like the ES6 modules, right? So at this point of time, ES6 modules is, is the new standard that's coming out. And it is the standard, right? Common JS is like convention, but ES6 modules is something that's written into JavaScript, right? There are new syntaxes that you can use. And the different, like the striking different about ES6 and other um, module system that we that existed before is that because ES6 adds a new syntax, like the import and export statement, now when you want to import something, you use the import and export statements. Right, and because of that, 
you can easily analyze your code. You can do static analysis on your code to figure out what is being imported and what is being exported without having to know, without having to understand the, how the code works. Right? Imagine if previously what you have is some function that you define for your, your module system. Right, some, some magic global function, like say for example, define or require, right? These functions, these are just functions and you can override the function or you can assign a function to another variable and use that variable instead of that function, right? And all this means that you, you can't be sure about what is being actually being imported or required by looking at just looking at one file, you couldn't figure out like what is being required, right? So this is the very striking difference between something you can statically analyze without having to run the code versus that like 90% of the time you are sure because like who who does that? Who redefine a re require when you, sh you know that it, it will screw something up but you can't be 100% sure, right? That, that still could happen, right? So this is what sets the ES6 and CommonJS and other module system apart. So imagine you are an author of Webpack. You created this module bundle, Webpack, um, by basically understanding how CommonJS works and you build primarily with a design based on CommonJS. And then now in this year, 2015, there's a new module system that is being added to the standard, right? People would start using import and export. What should you do then? Fast solution to all this is to say whether you can apply some transformation to the um, code, much like we do transformation um, like loaders do the transformation of modules, right? So you, you can do the same thing where you take import and export statements, you transform them into common JS, and then everything will fit nicely to your bun module bundle and then you can continue to bundle them, right? So that is more of like because of this legacy, a quick approach will be having to do this to support the ESX modules. And along the way doing that, you probably lose some sense of the, the, the specific features of ES6 modules, which is the ability to be statically an analyze uh, what is being imported and what's exported and able to figure out that, say for example, you are imports one function from this huge module, you are able to analyze that because with the import statement, you can see that you only have one name. You basically able to know what you are using. So roll up, is something that was designed to catch on that, to say, hey, since I am something entirely written anew, now I can think about not thinking about common JS or whatever. Let's just think about ES6 modules and see how we can use ES6 modules, the ability to static analyze and to figure out um, a way to build more optimally, right? Yeah, so that is what rollup is. Of course, fast forward now in 2021, Webpack has first class support of ES6 modules. Uh, it does tree shaking, it know what you're importing and it ables to not adding things that is not being imported. Sorry for renting over and over. Hopefully this paints you a picture of the um, background story of rollup. And I hope that you can learn something from this which is whenever there's a new standard, right? There's, there's always bound to be a new standards because there's always problems to be solved, right? And a re very recent one would be um, container query from CSS. So are you going to be just let it be or you study this new standard and think about how you can adopt. And when you adopt to your, to your workflow or your, to your product, you could um, try to squeeze the new thing, the new standard, into existing workflow, like how Webpack initially supports ES6 modules by transpiling them down to common JS. Or you could say, hey, let's, let's stop for a while and let's rethink the whole thing because of this new standard, maybe some assumptions that were made previously may no longer be available, right? So we can start a new and start at a new position and rethink everything. There's no right or wrong answer because sometimes you still have to live with what you have, right? There's, uh, you may not be that lucky to have entirely a greenfield project for you to try entirely new, but this is just a uh, food for thought, right? So let's get back to roll up. Let's see how we can use roll up and how we can setting up roll up. Let's try first create a project. So I'm going to create a 
project folder called test rollup. So the first thing is we're going to install rollup, right? So you're going to add yarn at rollup and that's all you need to install. So rollup and the CLI itself is within the package called rollup, right? Unlike webpack. So over here, I'm going to create some files so that we can try to bundle them. So now we've created the file index.js that imports from A and B. Next thing we're going to do is try to bundle them. Right? Before that, we're going to write a rollup config. Um, in the root folder, right? So rollup.config.js. So I'm going to specify the input, the entry file, right? So the input is the source index.js. So now let's try to bundle it. mpx rollup-c. Dash C is trying to specify the config file, which is the rollup-config.js. It's actually the default value, right? If you leave it empty, like if you don't specify rollup.config.js, then what happens is that it will default to rollup.config.js. So unless you have a different file name, then probably you will have to type it out. Right, so let's bundle it. And immediately you can see that because I specify inputs only and without specifying the output, uh, rollup is actually going to compile and um, going to log out everything into the standard outputs. Right, so you can see over here, uh, this is being bundled into standard output and you can see this is our bundle that we're going to build. So if you want to output the bundle content into a file, then you have to specify the output options. Over here, I say output file this.js. So uh, let's try to run that again. And you see that the file is going to create being created and stored into this.js, right? So if I take a look over here, uh, I find myself the bundle code, right? It's the same thing as we see in the standard output. Now, uh, if you want to use rollup in some of the tools, um, you want you probably want to use rollups node API to to call it. So here, let's do that. So I'm gonna call, create a file called build with rollup, and over here I am going to import rollup, and to build I'm gonna say rollup dot rollup. So this takes in an option. So let's uh, let's copy the option from rollup config. Okay, and what this rollup does is that it returns a promise. Okay, so I'm going to say dot then. And this promise resolve with the uh, rollup build itself, right? So um, at this point, the rollup has already bundled the whole thing into this something called a rollup build. So this is like a build result, but you haven't really write that results out to somewhere or you, this results, you can do it with something else, right? For example, maybe save the results to somewhere, right? So this results itself, we need to write it to a file. And the simplest way of doing that is to say rollup build.write. And over here, we need to pass some options. So these options is, is the same options that you see over here. Uh, but uh, the main thing that you need is the output, right? So you can assume that over here you don't you need only inputs and here you need only the outputs, right? Of course, they, they can be the same object and uh for something like options, and yeah, you have everything into one uh, that that will still work as well. It's just that one reads only the input and other stuff, and one reads only the output, right? Options. So let's try to run this. Let's try to run this. Node uh, build with rollup. Okay, so now we have this new file, right? This with API. If you want to um, integrate it to some of your scripts, then you can use this uh, rollup API instead of the rollup CLI. So the next thing I want to talk about is the build and the development modes, right? So in build, usually you just build once in, for production and you upload all the build files to your file server or CDN, right? But for development, usually you want to constantly watch your file changes. And whenever you change something, you want rollup to get to, to know about changes and then to build another bundle, right? So in that, you use the rollup uh, watch mode. So um, over here, I'm going to set that up first. I'm going to say rollup uh, C dash watch. Right, so this, uh, it will first create the first bundle first, but then at the same time, it will set up a watcher to watch all the files, file changes, 
right? So say for example, I create a new file called c.js, right? And, and then I try to import c.js and add it over here. This is, this is what we have, but as soon as I save this, rest that it will build again. You can tell from here. But if we take a look over here in the bundle code, you will see that now we have A, B, C, right? So, uh, yeah, it constantly watches your file changes and build a new bundle for you. So this is great for development mode so that you, if you try to run it, you don't have to manually keep having to run, roll up, build, run, roll up, build every time, right? You just run, you just set this up and then the the final build output will always reflect to all the changes you have, you have made. Now let's take a look at how we can use the watch mode on the rollup node API. Over here we were using rollup.rollup to build our rollup bundle. But for watch mode then you will have to change it to uh, rollup.watch instead. Okay, you can pass in the same options. But what it returns instead is not, no longer a promise but a watcher. So this watcher object has a few methods that you can tap into. First of all, you can listen to what is the current state of this watcher is, whether is it starting to watching or whether uh, some file changes trigger uh, a new build. So you can listen to events that's happening on this watcher. So what you do is you say watcher dot on event and for events over here, you get to know what kind of events that's happening on this watcher. So you can use the event.code, say for example, if it's bundle end, then yeah, it's, it's just finish its own bundle, right? So maybe what we can do here is we just console out what are the different events that's happening to our watchers, event.code, right? So later on, when we start the watcher, this script will never end, right? Because uh, once you start running, it will start watching the file changes and um, any time changes, uh, any changes that's happening to our file, this on event listeners will be called and then we have to handle them, right? So if you design your script that maybe because of some events that's being triggered and you want to close all the watcher and does the cleanup and then ends the script, then probably by then you should call watcher.close, right? This will do all the cleanup and unregister any operating system calls to watch the files, right? But for now, we're gonna comment this out, right? We will kill the script ourselves later on. So let's try to run this. So I'm gonna say notes build with rollup.js. And now you see all the different events that's happening, right? Starts bundling and then bundle starts, bundle ends and end, right? So if we come over here and uh, change this file, I change it to D, if I save it, you see that it starts bundle again and then bundle end and yeah, it starts another bundling again. And if you come over here to look at the file, you'll notice that the file has changed, right? The bundled file has updated accordingly. So that's how you use the node uh, rollup API for watching. So when, as you are developing your application, the next thing you probably would want to ask is that how do I see this file, right? I know it's written over here, but you want to be able to um, open it up in a browser, right? You want to have a local server that serves this file, right? So for Webpack, we've seen that we, uh, in the last video, we've seen about Webpack dev server that serves the locally built file from Webpack. But in Rollup, there's no dev server or rather there's no such options and there's no such uh, um, packages provided by Rollup as first party, right? There's a few third party plugin, but there's no official support from that, right? And actually you don't really need much, right? So what you need is a way to serve the file. And if there's something changes, probably you just need to reload, right? So for reloading, there's a third party plugin again called Rollup plugin auto reload. But for serving files, usually you can use like the serve or my favorite is HTTP server, right? No particular reason. I just use them because when I look for something like that, this is the first thing that come in mind and it never failed me ever since. So say if I'm going to build this to a public folder locally, watch, right? So everything is built into the public folder. 
So imagine maybe I have going to have a indexed HTML. Uh, I'm going to have a basic HTML over here, BLD. So here's a very basic HTML. So now um, I would use HTTP on a different tab. I'm going to run HTTP server, the public folder, right? So this, once this start up, so I will just go visit uh, the site. Uh, here we go, right? If I inspect elements, you probably will see um, the, the script is being loaded, right? So I can visit my this.js over here. Uh, this is this is what we built. Although we don't have a dev server that does all this, but third party tools are easily available and you don't really need something too fancy about it. This is how you would do it for rollup. So the next thing we're going to look at is the rollup config. As you can see here, it's an object, meaning you can specify a lot more fields over here. Instead of going through all the list of options and list them out over here in this video, I'm going to show you where you can find them in the documentation, right? So at least you can read about what are options available and figure out yourself which one you need. So uh, let's see, let's come over the rollup documentation. So rollup documentation uh, itself is one huge file. Uh, it's it's like everything is in this page, right? One huge page. Um, so for options, what you need to search for is this thing called the big list of options. Here is the complete list of options that you can specify for rollup config.js, right? So most importantly, as I said, input and output, right? So input and output are all here. So in the previous videos, when we talk about module bundling, we talk about different stages, right? So we first start with resolving for dependency, right? With that dependency, maybe sometimes you need to apply some transformation, right? That will be like the loader or the transformer. And then with transforming all the modules into JavaScript modules, then you can continue to resolve for more dependency. And once you finish finding all the dependency, the next thing you probably want to do is to bundle all of them together. So you have the resolve, transforming and bundling. So let's take a look at how we can configure each of these stages, right? The resolving, the transforming, and the bundling. And apparently in rollup, if you take a look over here, the huge list of options, you see mainly are inputs and outputs and some other things, right? But there's no options for you to configure them, right? That's because in rollup, all of these are handled by plugins. So you have to use a plugin to do that for you, right? Plugin can affect how you're resolving for things, how you're transforming certain modules, and how you bundle all of them together. Uh, let's take a look at what are the official plugins that is being supported. So I to look for them, uh, easy way is to go to GitHub repository. So here, if you scroll down and take a look, here are the list of the official rollout plugins, right? So um, they are sorted in alphabetically order, but Think about resolving, right? So if you want to resolve something, probably uh, it will be maybe you search for the word resolve, then you'll find that a few uh, plugins that is related to resolve, right? Say resolving for aliases or this alias plugin, resolving uh, using uh, dependency from node modules is the node resolve plugin and dynamic imports that contains variable is a dynamic import vars, right? So if you use these plugins, then they help you on in terms of the resolving, right? So this is how you configure them, right? And when you use this plugin, um, the way to configure is you can specify options into these plugins themselves, right? And the same thing happens for transforming, right? Um, if you want to transform CSS to JavaScript so that you can bundle them, then probably there will be a CSS uh, rollup plugin for CSS, right? So all of this is configured through plugins. And for rollup, fortunately for us, plugins is very easy to write. And you can easily write up a plugins to, to configure them, right? So let me show you an example of how you could write a plugin. Um, I'm not gonna go too, too detailed in, in this. I'm just gonna show you um, the rough idea of things. And we will probably talk about them uh, in more details later on when we talk about plugins as well as like configuring configuring, resolving for rollup, right? So here is a simple example of plugins, right? So plugins is specified using an array, right? So uh, in rollup, 
you can look for this plugins development. So see, it has its own place in the official documentation. It means that Rollup wants you to write them. So here, uh, the things that you need to know of is the hooks, right? The build hooks. If you look over here, list of build hooks are this, right? These are the names of the hooks, right? So how you write a simple example of a plugin is that you can come over here um, and pass in an object over here, right? This object will need to have name. So name will be the name of a plugin, my plugin name. And then next thing is all the hooks, the build hooks for your rollup, right? So here, uh, one thing we probably interested in is the resolve ID, right? So if you click over here, it sees that um, it's the, uh, it's a function that figures out how you resolve for certain things. Right, say for example, how do you resolve from bar? So if you look at here, it's a function. So you define this function, right? Resolve ID. So it gives you three parameters, right? The source, the importer. So you can think of this function as, I have a function that takes in, um, so say for example, if I write import foo from maybe like some something, then I take it, so I will have to, to customize the resolve. I probably will have a function that says uh, this string. And also where is this file, right? Because where is the file, de uh, will, will, depending where, where is the file may affect the final results, right? So maybe this is the file path, right? So users, uh, tan, uh, li hao tan slash some, somewhere, right? So you, you hope that you have this function where when you call, it returns final path, like say user li hao tan, and then maybe is this thing, right? So you, you expect it to return you the actual file path so that you can find that module itself, right? So this is how resolve ID is, uh, this, this function does. So you, you can write your own function to configure that, right? So you can have your own thing, maybe you are, if you are, having aliases instead of using an alias plugin, maybe you can do this where you check for if source in equals to matches a string that you want to al uh, alias name, then you return the actual name, right? So uh, since this is a function, it's very easy for you to customize it to return anything you like, right? And the same thing goes for other build hooks, right? So, um, so we say about resolve, then resolve is mainly uh, implemented through this resolve ID build hooks. And then the next phase is loading and transforming, right? So that you would need the transform plugin, right? A transform build hook. So here, if you look at transform is what uh, takes in the code and then takes in the code as string and then returns a code as string, right? So that will transform your code, right? And finally bundling, you will find again, there's uh, uh, things like how do you render the chunk? So these are like, how do you render the files? How do you render certain things? How do you, meaning you, how, how do you get your bun, uh, the bun, like the, all the modules information and how do you generate a string out, right? So that will be configured through these hooks, right? And some of the official hooks, uh, some of the official plugins will already do that for you. So, so if you, what you need is more, uh, common, then probably you just use a plugins. But if you want to configure that a uh, very customized stuff, then probably you would have to write your own plugin for rollup. And the things that you need to take note will be impl implementing these hooks in the plugin. If rollup is the first bundler that you watch me talking about, then probably you should watch about webpack and the next video vids and snowpack. And so that you can compare all this um, different bundlers and see how is it like using them. So that's it about Rollup. We've seen how Rollup was created and I hope that inspires you. And we've seen how we can use Rollup, right? Different build modes, wash modes, uh, CLI, and then how to use the Node API and finally how we can configure a Rollup. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any things you like to talk about, comment in the section below. And finally, if you haven't done this, you should know by now, you should subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell 
so that you get notified when the next video is out. So see ya. Bye bye. Roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up.